Welcome to this presentation on creating a simple ETL. In this demo, we'll review the process of creating and running a standard data integration job using a simple example that sorts a list of names from a file and outputs the results to the console. With the integration perspective open in Studio, let's create a new job. There are a couple of ways to do this. Here we'll simply right-click Job Designs in the repository and select Create Standard Job. Let's name the job Simple ETL. Best practices dictate that we should fill out the purpose and description fields, so let's do that now. When that's done, click Finish and the blank job opens in the designer. Let's add a tfile input delimited component to read from our sample data file. Find the component in the palette, then drag it onto the desired location on the designer. Double click it to open the component view and configure it to properly read the input file. First, let's point the component to our sample data file on our desktop by clicking this button with three dots and navigating to the file in this window. Then we'll change the field separator character from the default semicolon to a comma. Lastly, we'll set the header value to 1 to skip the first line. This way we won't interpret the header row as data. With those settings in place, let's define the component schema to properly map the fields in the file to columns in the output flow. Click Edit Schema, and then in the Schema window, click the plus button to add fields. You can determine the number of fields and their names by looking at the structure of the input file. For this example, we'll leave all the data types set to string. When that's done, click OK. Now let's add a tsort row component to sort the data. This time, we'll add the component using a quicker approach that works well when you become familiar with the list of components available. Click on the location in the designer where you want the component and start typing its name. Press Enter and there it is. We'll add the final tlog row component the same way. Now let's connect the components to allow data to flow. Once again, there are different ways to do this. First, we'll right-click the tfile input delimited component and select Row Main. Then drag the connection onto the tsort row component. That's one way to connect them, and here's another way. We'll select the tsort row component, then grab the output part and drag it over to the tlog row component. Let's select the tlog row component. If we open the schema editor for this component, we notice that Studio has automatically propagated the schema we defined earlier across both flows. Click OK. One final detail to address is the sorting. Let's configure that now by double-clicking the tsort row component. In the component view, below the criteria table, click the plus button twice. Set the first criteria to last name and set both to alpha. This will sort the names alphabetically. Let's run the job by opening the Run view and clicking the Run button. As the job runs, the connections in the designer are annotated with numbers representing the number of rows passing through each flow, and the output appears in the console, which you can expand by clicking the plus icon here. Notice that the output is sorted as expected. Let's review some of the concepts. We created a simple job. Jobs are built using one or more components. Most jobs include at least the following. An input component that reads from a data store performing the extract part of the ETL. An output component that writes data either to another data store or, as in this case, to the console. This forms the load part of the ETL a processing component that performs some sort of transformation on the data. In this case, we're sorting records alphabetically based on the name values. As we've seen, 
components have their own unique configuration settings, but common to all component configurations is a schema that prescribes the structure of the data flowing through it. Components are connected by rows that enable the structured data to flow from one component to the next. There is another connection type known as a trigger. Triggers facilitate execution control and error handling, but do not carry data. Components are grouped together into functional units called subjobs, which represent a data flow from an input to an output. As your jobs get more complex, subjobs become useful because they provide a visual grouping as well as a handy way to manage the executable pieces of your job. In this presentation, we looked at the concepts involved in creating jobs using Talon Studio, and we saw those concepts used in an example job that loads and sorts data. For more information about Talon Studio and data integration, please check out the other presentations in this series. Thanks for watching.